How much solar do I need to run my RV? I've been asked this quite a few times and I see it on the groups and the forums online and I got some bad news for you. Solar isn't gonna run anything. So we're gonna talk about how we're gonna figure out how much power you're gonna need, what is it gonna to take to get you there, but we're gonna talk about this uh, and exactly how it's gonna help you. But I do have some good news for you and we're gonna discuss some RV solar, all about it. So stick around, check it out. Hey guys, welcome to the Salty Trips channel. I'm Chris, and today we are gonna be talking about RV solar. I, like I said in the beginning, people ask, how much solar do I need to run my RV? Well, I hate to break this to you, solar doesn't run anything. Solar is just a way to collect energy. Batteries and inverters and stuff like that, that's what runs your RV. And solar just replenishes your batteries. Like when you go to get a car, you don't ask, well, how many gas stations do I need to run this car? The gas station is just where you get the energy from. So if we're gonna discuss solar and powering your RV, we gotta start from the beginning. What exactly powers the RV? RVs have two kinds of power. They have DC power, which is direct current, and AC power, alternating current. DC current comes from your batteries. And usually those are lead acid or AGM. Uh, most, a lot of newer RVs are starting to put lithium in there now. Basically run on 12 volt in all 12 volt systems. A lot of RVs are putting like 12 volt TVs, 12 volt fridges in there so that you can just run a lot of the basics off of the batteries alone. But like your outlets, your hair dryer, your microwave, all those things, your coffee maker, those run off of 120 volt AC power. So those are two different kinds of powers that you, you get from. And if all you're looking for is to just to run the basics, just keep the lights on, which are 12 volt DC power, you don't need much, you just your your fans. Like if that if that's all that you need, you only need enough solar to replenish the battery that you're using for those products. But if you wanna run more than that, like we have chosen, and I'll go into a little more detail about uh, what we've done here. And we've got two inverters and 2,500 watts of solar on the roof. If you wanted to run more than that, you wanna run a microwave, you wanna run an air conditioner, hair dryer, straightener, coffee maker, all that stuff, you're gonna need 120 volt power. Most of that comes from shore power. That's when you plug it into a pedestal, plug it into your RV, and that powers all that stuff. If you don't have that kind of power to plug into, most people just get a generator. And uh, you just have to get a generator large enough to run all the things that you want in there, just depending on the power consumption. And we'll go over that. And we have a handy tool that we're gonna share with you later that's gonna help you decide exactly how much power you're using and how much power you need to run your RV. So the most reason people go solar is because they don't wanna, they wanna be out in nature. They don't wanna hear that uh, loud generator going. You just wanna enjoy the peace and quiet. So people go solar and they get their power from there. And how do you take, that solar and make it 120 volt AC. Well, you have to have a battery bank to store that power. Then you have to have an inverter, which converts DC power to AC power. Typically, most systems are 12 volt. We went with the 24 volt system. And if you're not quite sure how voltage and amperage works, I highly recommend just uh, you know searching on YouTube for basics on AC and DC current. Uh, just to give you a little summary, is volts times amps equals watts. So let's say this is volts, and this is amps, and you have wattage over here. If you have the same amount of wattage, um, like you said, higher voltage, you need less amperage. And if you have less voltage, you need higher amperage to make the same amount of watts. And the more amperage you have, the bigger wires you have to have and all that stuff. That's going into other details. I have a whole build on our system that kind of explains a little more about that, but we're not gonna kind of really go into that. We're gonna talk about how we're gonna figure out how much power you're gonna need, what is it gonna to take to get you there, and what do you, how are you gonna determine how you're gonna replenish those batteries. If you're just a weekend warrior, you don't run a lot of power, you may not need as much as somebody who's full-timing or wants to um, go off grid for like a week. And you just have to think, well, do I wanna run an air conditioning? How long do I wanna run it for? Um, am I chasing the weather? Just uh, only go camping where there's good weather, where I can open the windows and run the max air fan and keep everything cool. 
and how much of that stuff do you want to run? And we decided it was pretty important to us, so we installed two inverters, and we have 4,800 watts of power we can use at any given time all day long, basically. So we can run two air conditionings, a hair dryer, microwave, whatever we need to. But if you only want to run just your TV, which is typically 120 volt, but there are some 12 volt versions out there, uh, you're going to need, that doesn't create, draw a lot of power. That's maybe like 100 watts an hour. But like a hair dryer is going to, you know, be like 1500 watts, but you don't use it for that long. So you can, you're going to have to use this tool, like I was saying, um, that's going to help you determine how much power you're going to need. And we're just, we're going to discuss that. And this device is something that you probably already ha have a watchdog surge protector. It has a Bluetooth capability and lets you know how much power is coming into your RV. But we're going to talk about this uh, in exactly how it's going to help you. All right, so we got our watchdog app up and we have line one and line two. This is a 50 amp RV, so we have two hotlines coming in able to provide up to 50 amps each. So right now we're running about 60 watts on line one, 20 watts on line two. And the microwave, I believe, is hooked up to line one, but we're going to check it out and you're going to see a jump in wattage here and you'll be able to track exactly how much power it's using. It's cranking up. Oh, I guess it's on line uh, two. Look, it, it jumped up from 60 watts to 1600. And it's pretty simple to do. We'll do that with the air conditioning. All right, so we're going to kick on the rear air conditioning. Lower the tip. So you're going to see here, it should be line one. It's kicking on. That is the fan kicking on. So it just jumped up to 314 watts. And then when the compressor kicks on, it's going to jump up even higher. We do have a soft start on both our ACs, so that'll help. All right, the compressor just kicked on, and it's slowly ramping up. You're looking at a little over 1,100 watts right now, about 11, a little over 1,100 watts. So, you know, that's about how much it's going to draw. But like I said, those have a uh, compressor that has a very high amperage startup rate, so you need a soft start. All right, so that's gonna help you determine what's the maximum amount of inverter power that you need to run the systems that you want to in your RV. You can just take that and turn on everything that you wanna be able to run at one time, and then track it with your Watchdog app that connects via Bluetooth to your Watchdog search protector out there. That's gonna be a big help in just determining how big of an inverter you need to get. And the ne next thing you need to decide is, well, how much batteries are you gonna need and how much solar are you gonna need? Well, let's start off with batteries. Basically, the way we decided to uh, measure how much batteries we wanna use is you can only get solar during the day and recharge during the day. So you wanna be able to get through the night and into the next morning before the sun, before the sun starts recharging your battery bank before you run out of juice. So you, go, you kind of want to measure how much power you're going to be using throughout the night so that when you wake up, your batteries aren't dead and nothing works until the sun comes up and recharges everything or you have to pull out the generator and start putting you know, power back into your batteries. And how are you going to measure that? Like, you know, you know how much the AC is going to draw per hour, but it doesn't run all the time, does it? It just, it turns on for a while, runs for a little bit, then kicks off. So it's not using power when it's off. It's only using power when it's on. So the best way to determine that is you go back to your Watchdog app. And there's this little thing up here, and it is, it shows you how much energy you're using. And it has a little button over here that you click and it asks you, do you want to reset? And it keeps track of how much energy you're using. So like usually typically you start running out of solar uh, about five o'clock ish in the afternoon, just depending on where you're at or what, what the conditions are. Typically you don't start pulling in good solar till after usually 10, 10 11 o'clock in the, in the morning. And just, you know, depending on the time of year, there's a lot of other factors, but just assume you only have about six hours, five, six hours of good, like good solar, you know, production. All you have to do is just pretend like you're boom docking or whatever while you're still on hookups or whatever and only run the things that you want to be able to run throughout the night and make it to the next morning. If you want to run one AC or 
you uh, you know you you have a dehumidifier that you have to keep running or whatever it is certain lights you have to have on uh, your sound machine whatever it is you a fan whatever it is that you're going to plan on using throughout the night into the next morning you run all those things and you start it in the evening and then in the morning when the sun's coming up uh, during you know prime solar production time which usually is about 10 o'clock or so um, then you hit stop and then you read out it's going to tell you in kilowatt hours how much power you used and you just add three zeros to that and you'll know that's how many watt hours that you'll use let's say you only used five kilowatt hours which is 5,000 watt hours uh, 12 volt 400 amp hour lithium battery is a little over 5,000 watt hours so if you had one 12 volt battery that was 400 amp hours, you would be drained by morning. Whatever it is you think you're gonna need, I would probably go one and a half times what you think you're gonna need. And always, you can always look at it this way too. If you think you're gonna need that and you decide, okay, well, well I wanna run this too, or I wanna run that too, you know, build your system for worst case scenario. Like at first when we started building, we were just wanted to be able to run one AC in our fridge while we traveled, our 120 volt fridge. And then it became, well, um, we want to run both ACs in case, you know, in case we ever lose power at, at a RV park and we're away from the RV and the puppies are in here, that they'll be safe. So they, during the summer and it gets hot. So we wanted to be able to run two ACs. I'm like, well, if we're going to run two ACs, we might as well go, you know, go all out. So we have basically 1200 amp hours of 12 volt power in here. We ran a 24 volt system, which is 600 amp hours. Remember, uh, they're conversely relative to each other volts and amps so then this is where we get to the solar you decide to go with 400 amp hours of batteries and during the day you're going to be running systems too so you want to build a solar system that's going to be able to run those things and recharge your batteries back to full by the time the nighttime comes again or else you're going to have to have some kind of supplemental energy like a generator or something that's going to help boost the system all right, so let's say you decide to put a thousand watts of solar on your roof and at peak time, let's say they run at peak proficiency for five hours, that's going to basically replenish your battery, the, just your battery. So that whole time, if you don't run anything, it's just going to get your batteries back up to 100, your 400 amp hour, 12 volt batteries back up to 100%. And that's, so you're not going to be able to run anything in those five hours except for that. So you want to be able to run stuff and replenish it that's assuming that your solar panels are running at peak proficiency which they do not so you want to you want to get more than that so you can run the things uh other things while you're recharging your batteries like i said this is where it gets down to like solar does not run anything like if uh, if you just had solar without without a battery bank you know let's say you're pulling in 1500 watts you got the microwave going on and a little cloud comes by and it drops down to a thousand watts and whatever your power just goes away so you have to have that battery bank there you can go back to your watchdog app and track just pretend to do a boondocking day and how much power do you use during the day figure that out too and you can add that on how much you need to replenish your batteries and you want to build more than you think you're going to need so that just in case a little bit of cloudy or whatever or but you can always like you know like i said it all depends on how much power you're using. Let's say your, your, your batteries are getting too low, turn something off. Save some power. Do something a little bit different to save more power in the meantime until the, you get more sun. But if you get 2,000 watts of solar and in those five hours, you're going to be able to replenish your batteries and then you have 1,000 watts per hour to do whatever you need to during the day. And if you need more than 1,000 watts, it's going to pull from the batteries and you're not going to charge them as fast. Or if you just sh shut other things off, you have 2000 watts, it's just going to charge your batteries twice as fast. You want to try to kind of plan for more than you think you'll need. Like we went 2,500 watts on the roof because that's about all we could fit on there and still be able to walk our roof and get to the slide outs and stuff like that. We have to, if we want to go through more power than, than those can replenish our batteries, we're going to have to have a generator just to run for a few hours here and there to supplement our batteries back up because we want to be able to run two air conditionings whenever we want. I don't want to be subject to following the weather or anything like that. If Kim wants to uh, have the hairdryer going and I want to pop something in the microwave and an AC kicks on, 
I don't want to have to worry about. So we went dual inverters. I have a whole video about the install on that. And oh, I have a playlist of all our, our entire Victron build. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully uh, that app will help you decide how much your power you're going to need uh, throughout the day, throughout the night, uh, how big of an inverter you're going to need. Uh, if you found this useful at all, you know, please hit that subscribe button, notification bell, all that fancy jazz. Give this video a big thumbs up. Leave uh, any comments or questions that you might have down in the comment section below. We do trucks, travel, towing, RV life full time. So if you're into any of that kind of stuff, you know, make sure you subscribe, follow along, and we'll see you guys next week.